All right, I'm going to talk today about Stephen King's Carrie. I'll be discussing the movie. By the way, I picked these up from my local library. All right, the library is your friend. Uh, I like the library. I don't know why more people don't use the library. So, Stephen King, Carrie. This movie, or this book, was published, I believe, in 1974. It's, uh, I think it's his first real novel that was a hit that took off. Um, and then the movie came out in, I believe, 76. So I took some notes on this. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bury the lead here. Uh, this is not my favorite, you know, Stephen King... I'm not really what you would call a Stephen King fan, per se. Um, I haven't read a lot of Stephen King books, and that's something that I want to remedy this year because my library has a ton of Stephen King books. A really, like, basically a whole shelf section that's just, like, nothing but Stephen King. So I don't think I'm going to read everything, but uh, I, I'm going to try to read some of his early stuff at least read his major works from the 1970s and 80s so i started with this now let me just lay out some things about the book the book okay the movie's probably more more well known but uh this has some things in it that have always kind of put me off to stephen king right up front we get 18 pages of text talking about this young girl, Carolyn or Carrie, um, who is experiencing her first period. And I mean, I'm just like, there's pages of this and it's really disgusting. It's one of the things that I didn't like about the book, The Dead Zone, is this gross out stuff that Stephen King talks about. And it's a little bit much. But uh, the number two thing in this book, Carrie's mother, okay, Margaret White, is the religious psycho mom. This is a trope of Stephen King. It was in the dead zone as well, although not quite as crazy as, as Margaret is in this book. But the religious psycho mom trope is in here. So essentially, what the story is about is Carrie... Okay, she has telekinesis, so she can move things with her mind, all right, objects um, and whatnot. So it's another story similar to the Dead Zone, and this is a person with extra power. You know, in, in Johnny's case, it was uh, extrasensory perception. In Carrie's case, it's telekinesis. And I know that he's got a book, uh, Firestarter, where the main character has powers of pyrokinesis, can catch things on fire. So I really think of this kind of like um, an X-Man story, so to speak. Carrie's powers really remind me of Jean Grey. With the, uh, it really does have the feel of like the Phoenix, you know, like just kind of losing control and wreaking havoc although that character is different but that's really the feel i get of it and it's kind of like if mutant powers were real like if there really were people that were walking around that were mutant freaks they would have psychotic breakdowns and be completely screwed up by it so it is a horrific take on that and um the thing the thing is is that Stephen King, I'm going to get into my sp my gripes with this book. Stephen King spoils his own book. Because the way that this book is told is through articles and book excerpts from fictional books. So one of them is called The Shadow Exploded. It's a, a made-up book or a periodical that's uh, interspersed throughout the text. So the book kind of feels like a... F a whatever you want to call. Um, it's kind of like a found footage movie, you know, something like the Blair Witch or uh, Cloverfield found footage. Only this is like the book version of it. It almost reminds me of, oh, I don't know. Like Bram Stoker's Dracula 
had diary entries, like the story was told through diaries. So this is kind of, you get uh, this one book called The Shadow Exploded. Then there's a number of, another book that is a biographical account called My Name is Sue Schnell. Sue, Sue Schnell is one of the main characters in this book. Her boyfriend's name is Tommy Ross. And Tommy Ross and Sue Schnell are two of the characters that are, they're, they're not villainous, okay? They're actually kind of decent people. Uh, there's two other characters in this uh, book that are kind of uh, antagonistic. You have Chris Hargerson, it's a female, and then Billy Nolan. Uh, Billy Nolan establishes another Stephen King trope. Billy Nolan is like the the 1950s greaser trope, like the guy that wears the leather jacket, greases his hair, drives around in a a, a souped up Chevrolet, um, just all around, just kind of a a real scuzzy character, right? Um, He's played by John Travolta in the the movie. Um, Chris Hargison, his girlfriend, the the really nasty lady. She is played by Nancy Allen, who you would know uh, uh, from RoboCop, from the movie RoboCop, Paul Vanderhoven's film. She was uh, RoboCop's partner in that movie. Um, she's kind of a nasty piece of work. But uh, anyways... There's also, so we got through the tropes, the tropes that are established in K Stephen King. These things will pop up in other Stephen King's work. So the uh, gross out content, the religious psycho mom, and the 50s greaser will be returning in other Stephen King works. So some of the other, uh, like I said, the the book is told through these periodicals. Through We also have a, a book in here. That's referenced called We Survived the Black Prom uh, by Norma Watson, which is a fictional publication from 1980 in the Reader's Digest. And then we have excerpts from the New England Associated Press. Um, the movie is straightforward. It doesn't have these, these periodicals and whatnot. But what I mean by Stephen King spoils his book is because these periodicals, they tell you... Like, I mean, like, right up front, like, very early on, we realize, okay, this book is talking about a tragic event. And we already know that the book is going to have a tragic ending because these periodicals and articles spoil it for us. They even go so far as to tell us that there's going to be characters that die. And it's just like, bro, you spoiled the ending of your own novel by doing this. So that I'm not a fan of. Um... I will say that uh, Carrie in the novel, she is overweight and she has acne. Uh, she's bullied because of it. In the film, she's played by Sissy Spacek, who is very thin, thin as a rail. Um, she doesn't have all the acne. She's just kind of an odd person. But uh, that's a major difference. And then um, Carrie's mother, uh, Margaret White, in the novel is much more we get more of the psychological side of her than we do in piper laurie's performance in the movie um this is a brian de palma film and i will say that the ending of the book in the movie as far as carrie's death in in her mother's uh, demise in the book and the film are different and even stephen king has gone so far as to say that the movie ending is better than the book. So Stephen King liked the ending of this more than his own novel. If you want the psychological side, the in-depth character study, then you're going to have to read the book. It's not very long. It's one of his shorter books, and I was thankful for that because uh, it clocks in at 250, 53 pages. Okay? But... um. My kids are going nuts downstairs. Sorry about the noise. But uh, I don't know. It's not my favorite. I'm I'm going to get down on this and say that both the book and the movie, they're not my cup of tea. 
at all, I'd probably give them a, and, and people probably going to get mad at me, but this is a three out of five for me, both the book and the film, not my favorite. Uh, I'll probably never read the book or watch the movie ever again. So thank, I'm very thankful for the public library. All right. Go ahead and leave your comments, both positive and negative, below. I can take it. I'm a man. Uh, I'm not a Stephen King um, fanatic. I find that a lot of his fans tend to be very cultish. And uh, I can get that way about John Carpenter movies. So I get it. If you're into somebody, you're into them. But uh, I'm glad that I read his debut novel. I think it was a decent debut, but it's just not my cup of tea. So we'll see what else we have in store. But I'm going to delve back into Frank Herbert's Dune and, and knock this out next while it's still fresh in my mind. All right. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.